This equipment separates the solid and liquid fractions of manure. The solid fraction is used for free stall bedding, compost barn bedding. The material is then pressed with approximately three tons of pressure and passes through two such systems. Two pairs of rollers carry out the pressing process. So this is the material that comes out with 32% dry matter. It drops here, we spread it. Currently, our standard usage is 15 tons. 15 tons of material per bedding replacement. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. Initially, our operation and herd were entirely pasture based. Starting around 2010 to 2011, we began housing the herd using a free stall barn with mattress bedding and an open structure. At that time, compost barns were starting to gain traction. We eventually decided to transition all barns to the compost barn system, dismantling the previous facilities, removing the mattresses, and adapting to compost bedding. This shed was constructed in modules, initially based on the idea that compost barns were more economical to build. For our development stage, it was a suitable fit. The barn was built with a concrete feed alley but was open-sided, which led to high costs with fans. We had already planned to implement a cross-ventilation system. From the start, the compost barn was designed with future adaptation to free stall in mind. As our herd size expanded rapidly, one effective alternative was to convert the compost barn into a free stall barn. The transition from compost barn to free stall occurred progressively. One of the biggest challenges we had with compost bedding was managing the manure-based bedding material. Our region is high altitude and highly humid, making it very difficult to dry the compost bed. Our manure removal logistics were insufficient and relied heavily on agricultural workers, which was not well integrated into the dairy routine. As we began converting to the freestall system, it became much easier to incorporate routine maintenance and bedding replacement, which proved very effective for us. At the time we began the compost barn, sawdust was extremely cheap around $1.6 per cubic meter, nearly free. That cost was essentially just the transportation. There was ample availability of sawdust in our region. Over time, sawdust began to increase in value, especially due to demand for industrial boilers. And today, while I'm not certain of the exact price, I believe it is around $12 per cubic meter. Even after migrating to the free stall system, we continued using sawdust for cow bedding. However, we started evaluating alternatives and decided to test the use of treated manure from the cows themselves as bedding material. We analyzed the microorganisms found in both sawdust and treated manure and discovered that the harmful bacteria were actually more prevalent in the sawdust. We also analyzed the dry matter content of the sawdust we received, which was around 50% dry matter, not far from what we currently obtain with manure-based bedding. Back when we were using sawdust in the free stall system, our annual cost for that material ranged between $60,000 to $100,000. Thus, we opted to invest in a solid separator capable of extracting as much moisture as possible from the manure. It took us some time to fine tune the process. In recent months, we have finally succeeded in optimizing it. We performed several trials using sanitizers, inoculant bacteria, and different treatments for the solid fraction. What has yielded the best results is treating the manure with hydrated lime at a 2% concentration. We have observed excellent results in terms of milk quality and a significant reduction in costs. The funds we previously spent on sawdust were reinvested in a higher performance solid separator, which paid for itself quickly and resolved not only the issue of bedding costs, but also a manure disposal problem we had. Although it could have been used in the fields, it proved more viable to reuse this material as bedding for the cows. Today, this entire barn measures 120 meters long by nearly 120 meters wide, equipped with a cross ventilation system. The exhaust fans are located here and the airflow follows this direction. These are the feed alleys and the corridors leading to the free stalls where the bedding areas are located. Recently, we installed an automated scraper system which scrapes the alleys and directs the manure to a collection channel. Currently, all manure from the adult herd and most of the young stock is directed to the solid separator. Only a small portion of the younger animals remains in the compost barn system, which we still find suitable for them. 
In this barn, treated manure is also reused as bedding. Today, we estimate that approximately 90% of our manure is channeled into the system, while 10% remains in the compost barn setup. All this manure is channeled through a gutter system that includes a recirculation mechanism for washing. It flows into a holding basin, where it is homogenized and pumped to a static screen separator, which performs pre-filtration. Subsequently, the material goes through a double roller press, composed of one rubber roller and one perforated stainless steel roller, exerting around three metric tons of pressure. The material then passes through two of these press systems, resulting in a very dry solid fraction, which is either sent to the composting yard or to the lime treatment area. Like many farms, we have long struggled with manure management, particularly as the scale of production increases, leading to larger and more complex volumes of waste. This challenge involved my father, brother, and myself. And over the past years, we focused intensively on solving this issue. Today, manure management has become an enterprise in itself. From the moment it enters the tank, it is treated as a separate operational system. This equipment separates the solid and liquid fractions of manure. The solid fraction is used for free stall bedding, compost barn bedding, and the surplus, around 30%, is composted and later reused in crop fertilization. The liquid fraction is sent to the biodigester, where biogas is extracted, generating electricity, and the digestate is used for fertilization. Today, cow manure is transformed into four distinct products, bedding, organic fertilizer, biogas, and biofertilizer. Currently, our monthly production is around 600 metric tons of milk. If we compare that volume, it is equivalent to receiving 30 centavos, more per liter of milk. This illustrates how critical it is to focus on cost efficiency and internal management, rather than relying solely on market prices, whether from the spot market, cooperative, or suppliers. Sometimes we negotiate over five or 10 centavos per liter when we could achieve significant cost savings within the farm itself, independent of currency fluctuations or foreign domestic markets. Having tight cost control within dairy operations is essential. In this regard, manure has transformed from a liability into four revenue generating products. Many of these revenue streams do not involve direct cash flow, but rather represent cost savings in the activity. Therefore, this project is not only financially sustainable, but also environmentally sustainable, involving nutrient recycling, waste reuse, and reduced logistics needs for external inputs, a highly valuable yet often underutilized resource in most dairy farms. Once the material exits the solid separator, it is deposited here. This is the raw solid fraction that will undergo treatment. It arrives with 32% dry matter and is spread over the yard. Our current standard application is 15 metric tons per bedding replacement, conducted twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays for the cows housed in the cross-ventilated free stall. Here, we spread the material and mix it with quicklime, homogenizing it. We turn the material daily, which raises the temperature to 79 degrees Celsius, promoting drying and sterilization. Once treated, it returns to the system with 38% dry matter fully sanitized. It is reintroduced to the bedding alleys, eventually pushed into the collection gutter, then returns to the solid separation cycle. This recycled fiber is very light, soft, and dries quickly. In terms of drying efficiency and contamination control, it has outperformed the pine sawdust we previously used. This process ensures good homogenization, sanitization, and avoids teat and irritation or utter dryness thus maintaining mammary health. We have achieved optimal results with just 2% lime addition, given the volumes we handle today. This is the prepared bedding material. It is hot, and if pushed, it emits steam. You'll notice some grayish ash, indicating a highly inert material. This bedding is ready to be applied. We always operate with three piles, maintaining a reserve stock in case of unexpected losses or emergencies. This strategy ensures we always have enough bedding supply. This approach has proven very effective, especially in controlling somatic cell counts and mastitis. At present, our milking system reports zero mastitis treatments in the herd.